Hello once again, I'm Cosmic, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ethereum, a futuristic sci-fi real-time strategy game developed by Tindalos Interactive and published by Focus Home Interactive. Ethereum takes place in a universe where three factions are vying for control. First is the Consortium, which is the corporate home of humanity. Second is the Antari, an alien race that have a very strong religion, basically Ethereum's equivalent to StarCraft's Protoss race. And the third faction is the Vector a race that is enigma to everyone, including themselves. The lore of the universe is fairly straightforward. Essentially, every 1,000 years, Ethereum appears on six planets that lay on the outer regions of space. Ethereum is essentially a rare, unstable resource that can be harvested for a variety of uses, including power generation. Ethereum is created by interdimensional beings that lay their eggs in our reality, and these eggs are then harvested for Ethereum. Due to this happening only once every 1000 year cycle, the three factions go to war every cycle for control of the Ethereum. This reoccurring war every 1000 years is known as the race for Ethereum. Now that's all been said, let's talk about the actual game. There are two game modes available, which are single player conquest and online multiplayer. The conquest mode works very similar to the Star Wars Empire at War game. Each faction takes turns on a map and they can perform a variety of actions. First, you must build fleets to conquer territory and fight. Each fleet has its own health bar and you can attack another fleet in space, however no battle actually takes place, it's just a chance roll to hit. Each turn you can move and attack territories that are not your own. There is also a card system in play. These are called political cards and have all kinds of effects that can affect fleet, battles, planets and more. For me personally, I felt that while the conquest map and the whole mode was a nice touch, it could have been a lot more. It was fairly simplistic and the lack of actual fit space battles like in other games would have been a welcome break from the ground combat. From the conquest map you're able to access the technology tree where you can spend the points that you have acquired to unlock new units and structures. While there is plenty to unlock and the faction specific units, I felt that the units were pretty bland overall. There was very little diversity between the factions. I wanted something more like Starcraft, where each faction felt totally unique to the other. While factions do have a lot of differences, ultimately I felt it wasn't enough and I would have liked them to have done a lot more here to make the experience less generic. As you would expect, this game is all about the ground combat. Ethereum comes at a time where we have very few good real-time strategy games around. The last real-time strategy game I played was Mechs and Mercs Black Talons, which was a woefully bad game in every aspect. Rather than base building, Ethereum's core mechanic focuses around control points called monoliths. Instead of having to build your base up, you have essentially to capture a monolith in a zone and then once your base is built upon that monolith you can add extensions to it. These extensions have different functions, such as an Ethereum refinery for improved Ethereum production in that zone, or to a spaceport allowing you to deploy troops from that location. Each zone you capture must be connected in some way to your main base to function properly. Should the enemy take a middle zone and split your territory in half, buildings and more importantly Ethereum production buildings will go offline until reconnected with the main base. Speaking of Ethereum, it's the only production resource in the game, and is acquired every minute. Some regions will have Ethereum spheres to harvest, which are the most valuable zones to control, and some zones won't have those but may have larger monoliths where you can build more extensions. There are a variety of units available to each faction and more can be unlocked via the tech trees. Units each have strengths and weaknesses, and through combat can be promoted in battle to become stronger, although this promotion doesn't last after battle. Ethereum has a decent mix of infantry, tank and air units. My issue with them is the fact that each faction is very similar in appearance to the next, and not just in an aesthetic way, but in gameplay too. You also have turrets available to protect your bases, but you are limited to three turrets per region. One thing I loved about the game is the indigenous sub-factions on the planets. These sub-factions can either be ignored, 
destroyed or even rallied to your cause in battle. By converting the necessary extensions on one of your monoliths to build up points with a sub-faction over time, and then once that bar is full, you can gain control of these powerful allies, which can literally turn the tide of battle. The enemy can also rally these sub-factions to their side, and it can often become a race to gain control of them, as they do provide a significant advantage. At the bottom of the screen you can see several abilities known as command skills. These skills are different for each faction, and use up command points in battle which do replenish over time. Command skills come in handy in a variety of situations, such as the orbital barrage, which can be used to destroy units or buildings very quickly, or get you out of a tight spot when you're losing an infantry battle. Another great feature of Ethereum was the environmental hazards in battle, which are known as climatic events, and that's as in the weather climate, not as in an orgasm. Depending on the type of planet you're, you are on, uh, you'll get a timed weather event, which can have different effects. An example of this is a volcanic planet having eruptions that destroy units, or for example a planet that has heavy electromagnets around it, that can have an electromagnetic storm that can play havoc with your ability to use command skills. These events can hamper your battle plans and you may have to t change strategies but you can also use these to your advantage. Battles are pretty fast paced, which is something I do like to see. It doesn't mean matches can't last for long, but it does mean that you are kept on your toes for the entirety of the battle. Things can change in an instant. I personally enjoy that there is a variety of tactics to employ in battle, and of course to ultimately win. You can win in different types of ways, for example you could destroy the enemy's orbiting fleet by using the orbital guns. I was also actually pretty impressed with the enemy AI, as on the harder difficulties it was actually a serious challenge to keep up, and that was a good thing because it's something that a lot of RTS games fail on is the enemy computer AI, and it was good to see that Ethereum does have a significant challenge when facing the computer. Now like I mentioned, it's not just single player, there is also 1 to 4 online multiplayer and that can actually be very very fun. The fast paced nature of the battles with all the skills, environmental effects and sub-factions in play, multiplayer can be a hell of a lot of fun. It certainly adds to the longevity of the title and I feel that without the multiplayer component the game really wouldn't be worth the price tag but thankfully the multiplayer component does work well and can be a lot of fun with your friends. In all I feel that Ethereum provides a good competent RTS experience. Its complete focus on macro management rather than micro management does leave it feeling somewhat without the depth of other more renowned RTS games. It certainly has lots of room to improve. I think a larger conquest mode would have been better for allowing a longer solo campaign. Like I've mentioned, I would have also liked to have seen a lot more diversity between the factions, different units to allow different playstyles and different tactics, which would give the game a lot more replayability. However, that being said, in a genre that we don't get many games, it is in my opinion one of the better RTS games to have come out in recent years, and for $30, from my opinion it is worth the price as there is a good amount of game to play for $30. Thanks for watching everyone, please do subscribe if you enjoyed the video, um, if you enjoy my work overall please head over to my Patreon and support me there and follow me on Twitter and I'll see you next time.